Hey everybody, Brandon Miller and Tommy Tran here with a bit of breaking news in our HQ studios in Fort Lauderdale. A longtime legendary head coach, Don Shula, passing away at the age of 90, of course. 33 years as a head coach, but a chunk of that we remember him for his time with the Dolphins. And we saw right here, part of the 72 team, of course, it went undefeated. Two Super Bowl titles had an NFL championship as well. Don Shula's excellence spans multiple decades. Many people forget he was the head coach of the Baltimore Colts before finding his time down in Miami. I mentioned that 72 season undefeated, 16 division titles, 19 playoff appearances, just two losing seasons for the man who has the most wins in NFL history as a head coach with 347. Here is a statement from the Miami Dolphins issued on this Monday. Don Shula was the patriarch of the Miami Dolphins for 50 years, brought the winning edge to our franchise and put the Dolphins and the city of Miami in the national sports scene. Our deepest thoughts and prayers go out to Mary Ann along with his children, Dave, Donna, Sharon, Ann, and Mike. 33 years as an NFL head coach. I mentioned Baltimore Colts first. That Super Bowl three loss to the New York Jets. And 26 there with the Dolphins. 328 when you see that number. Regular season wins most in NFL history as well. And again, back-to-back. Super Bowl titles with the undefeated team with the Dolphins there. For more on this breaking news, let's welcome in our NFL insider, Jason Lockenfora. Jason, Don Shula passes away at the age of 90. What's the first thing that comes to mind on, on what I mentioned was a very illustrious and excellent career? Well, I mean, obviously greatness. Uh, you can't tell the story of this league, and, and we know the NFL has been celebrating you know, just coming off the celebration of 100 years and, and all that went into that. You can't tell that story without a chapter on, on Don Shula. Um, I mean, this is somebody who spanned literally the, you know, the prime of Johnny Unitas through, you know, almost the, the entirety of Dan Marino's career. I mean, you talk about bookend quarterbacks. Um, someone who, you know, came into the, the league at a time when it was, incredibly low scoring and power run dominated and then he exited having you know or orchestrated one of the more uh productive uh and and eye-popping passing attacks in league history um he, he obviously was architect of some tremendous defenses uh this is a guy who had over 20 interceptions as a player like you're never going to find, I don't think, another person on the planet who intercepted over 20 passes and won almost 350 games as a head coach. I mean, just think about that number, 347 wins. Like, you could play a 20-game season, and nobody's going to come close to that anytime soon. I mean, that's, that's basically at least 10 wins a season for 35 years. I mean, that's unfathomable. Uh, and, and they weren't playing, you know, 16-game seasons for most of his his career as well and and I think something else that always stands out about him we we, we always you know hear these stories of the um in this day and age so many young managers young head coaches young general managers and that trend you know everybody's talking about Sean McVay well Don Shula was hired as an NFL head coach at age 33 back in I think 1963 so yet another area where he was a trend center <coughs> excuse me, and, and someone way ahead of his time in that regard as well. Um, uh, just an, an absolute um, titan in this game. And, with you know, you guys have, have the headquarters down there in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, you can't go anywhere in South Florida and, and, and still not see a street named after Don Shula or, you know, he, he's just so woven into the fabric of that part of the country. It's obviously – a very sad day for for those who knew him and and played for him or coached with him or coached against him um so many who loved him you there's just much to talk about it and then break you mentioned sort of that 72 year where they they don't run or they run the ball a lot it's not really pass happy bob greasy by the way uh, out for a lot of that year with a broken ankle and Irma morale comes in and, and helps them out that particular season let's focus on the dan marino years so much success obviously so early in Dan's career and then evolving into this passing offense where, where Dan's flinging it around and they're still able to put out some winning seasons in Miami. JLC, could you hear me there? I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought you were I heard you say Brady. I'm sorry. 
I meant Marino. I'm sorry, early success studio. with Marino. Yeah. It might have been my fault. The you know, 84 season, obviously getting to the Super Bowl, not being able to come back with sort of the, the Marino era there in Don Shula's career. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I grew up watching football, you know, in the early 80s and, and kind of saw the game evolve and was, you know, vividly remember Marino bursting on the scene. Um, and, and even the way he got Marino, um, you know, there was other teams interested at the time, but, you know, concerns about him and he fell way more than he should have. And, you know, Shula's old team, the Baltimore Colts were sort of in that mix, but, you know, they had their thing going on with Elway. Um and obviously, from the moment Marino got there, he started rewriting the record books. And, and you know, from what he did his rookie season, um, they all, you know, everyone talks about, and I understand, that he didn't win a Super Bowl. But if you were watching football at that time and you saw what he was doing, um, you saw what, what uh, you know, Don Coryell was doing with the Chargers, it just kind of looked, and, and Bill Walsh with, you know, the, the 49ers, it just kind of looked and felt different than what was going on in a lot of places. And for Marino to do what he did in that era where you could mug receivers, where you know the rules were very different, not nearly as conducive to the wide open spread attack passing games we see in college and the pros today. For Marino to, to be putting up you know th that kind of yardage and those touchdown totals in an era where defenses could get away with almost anything they wanted, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the last dance and all of our walks of lives, right? And we're watching 80s basketball. Wow, that's way more physical. That looks different. Uh, the NFL was too. And, and you know, for, for Marino and Shula to do what they did in that era, um, I can only imagine the numbers that they would have put up in these circumstances with the way the game's played today, with the way the rule book's written now. One more before I let you go, Jason, the 347 career wins most all time. It's going to be Shula, Hallis, and now Bill Belichick still obviously got, got a shot here. What do you think about that record, and how long do you think that'll stand? I mean, Bill Belichick's not going to catch Don Shula, you know? I, I mean, there, there's only – he can only do this for so long. I mean, even if you start at age 33, like Shula did at some point, you're going to burn out. You're going to want to do something else. You're going to just want to enjoy your grandkids or, or whatever. Uh, the, the, win, the win total is, is staggering. Um, you know, I can remember at the Super Bowl putting together a column on Andy Reid and, you know, looking up a bunch of numbers and stats and seeing where he stood with the greats of the game. And there's clusters of, of coaches when you start looking at wins and playoff appearances and division titles. Um, but but when you start talking about Shula and his legacy, you know, it, it, it does in, in many ways surpass Lombardi. It does in many ways um, surpass Landry. And, uh, you know, I, I, look, for, for, for me, I, I, it's hard to say that, that, you know, Bill Belichick isn't among um, a handful of people on this planet who are the greatest coaches or, or, or managers, um, regardless of discipline, regardless of sport. But I think Belichick would tell you, you know, he, he came in with the Baltimore Colts, you know, as a very young head coach. And, and he was steeped in the legacy of, of Shula and what he had already put in place in Baltimore, you know, before moving on. I think Belichick would, would, would tell you himself that, you know, chasing, you know, ch chasing Shula is, is kind of foolish. 347 wins. It's, it's really unfathomable. Only two losing seasons for Don Chula in 76 and 88 over that illustrious career. Thanks to Jason Lockenfora here with the breaking news. Again, Don Chula passing away at the age of 90. When you look at the rest regular season win percentage as an NFL head coach with a minimum of 15 years, Don Chula third on this list. Number one is Bill Belichick, and we just talked about him, the New England Patriots head coach there at 683. I want to keep the conversation going with uh, Pete Prisco joining us here. And Pete, just uh, you heard the numbers here, 347 total wins, including a postseason. The numbers he put up over that time in Miami. Uh, your thoughts uh, hearing this today? Look, it's a sad day for the NFL. And Don Shula, arguably the greatest coach of all time. Some people would say Bill Belichick, but Shula clearly in the conversation. I mean, what he did 
in Miami. And, you know, let's not forget he was essentially traded for a first-round pick that ended up being running back Don McCauley uh, for the Baltimore Colts. But uh, he went to Miami, was a disaster, and turned that team into one of the greats uh, in NFL history. They went undefeated in 1972. But the greatness of Don Shula can best be illustrated by his quarterbacks. Bob Greasy threw 11 passes in the 19, in the Super Bowl that they won to go undefeated. 11 in 19, that 1972 season. Then he had Dan Marino, arguably in my mind, he, I, the best passer who's ever thrown the football, and he changed the way he played. And that tells you the greatness of Don Shula. He was a special coach, uh, and having been around him, I can tell you he was an intimidating presence uh, when you went and talked to him about the game of football. Peter, a lot of younger generations, they didn't have the opportunity to see him coach the game. You just hear about the numbers. Uh, what are some of your favorite memories over that time in the early 70s where he really turned the Dolphins into a contender year in and year out? Well, he used to beat the daylights out of that team. Let, let's give him credit for that. Uh, you know, guys would come to camp, and uh, they used to have camp at St. Thomas University, uh, which was, uh, you know, a small private school here in South Florida in the Miami area. And uh, he used to beat them up. And I can remember going there even in the 80s, and they were having physical practices, and, and they would stay there, and they would stay in the dorms, and it was just a, a, a tough physical condition. He was one of those guys that believed in that and believed in getting guys in tip-top shape. Uh, and guys hated it. Uh, they hated playing for him, but they really respected him as a football coach. I can remember the looseness of the media situation back then, going down and having the interview with Don Shula in the lunchroom. He sat at the end of a table. He came and got his lunch, and the writers would sit around him. And I remember being a young writer sitting there uh, and seeing this big presence at the end of the table with that jutting jaw and how intimidating he could be for writers, but I can only imagine how intimidating he was for his players. So uh, clearly different times back then. But no matter what, he changed with the times, and had Don Shula coached even longer, he would have changed even more. Great football coach. Still that perfect record stands there. Uh, years later, of course, uh, we're now in 2020. How have you seen you know, his impact? Because you still have a lot of coaches that have been even groomed as an assistant still in the game. How have you seen that kind of change over time now in this year and age? Well, I think when you look at it, uh, again, we, we're, a lot of coaches were so set in their ways. It was a run league, and we were, you know, teams are going to pound the football, and that's why Eric Coriel, Don Coriel with the Chargers was so innovative and creative when he had Dan Fouts. And I think Don Shula was smart enough and a little bit of ahead of the curve like Don Coriel to say, you know what, I have Dan Marino who can flick the ball 50 yards in an instant why not change the way I played? And he changed the way he played. He changed his offense. And I think that has carried over now and through future generations of coaches that you can't try and fit guys to what you believe you should be doing, but fit what you should be doing to what you have in terms of uh, talent on the field. And I think that's the greatest uh, thing about Don Shula. Let's not forget either. This guy lost the biggest upset in football. He was the losing coach in Super Bowl III. Everybody remembers Joe Namath, but that Baltimore Colts team was considered one of the greatest teams ever, and they got upset. And yet he rebounded from that to build the Dolphins into what they became, which was a force uh, in the National Football League. All right, Pete Prisco, as always, appreciate your time. On this breaking news this morning with Don Shula passing away at the age of 90. We are going to take a one-minute break. Back in 60 seconds, Brandon Baylor and Tommy Train here. When we come back, Hammer and Hank Goldberg are going to be joining us, a South Florida living legend in his own right. Two-time Super Bowl champion Brian McFadden going to be joining us again. Don Shula at the age of 90, passing away this morning. The Hall of Famer back in 1997. We'll be right back on CBS Sports HQ.